Welcome into another episode of Everything is Logistics, a podcast for the thinkers and freight. I am your host, Blythe Bramley, and right now I am joined by Warren Dibiak. Did I say that name right? You did, yeah. I feel like I'm going to start every podcast from Vancouver because we were live at SBI Logistics Rendezvous, their annual conference for their freight agents. And uh, yes, I say that every time. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. It sounds like you I did. did. Great. So, great. Yes, you did great. <laughs> So before we actually hit record, we were really, there was a kind of a heated argument here earlier about whether the cold call is dead, if you can factor social media into your regular everyday life. So let's maybe set the stage a little bit with first who you are within SPI, and then we can get into the social media cold calling debate. <laughs> so uh, who I am with SPI, uh, basically I'm an owner, business operator, I contract with SPI, and then what we do is we work in a relationship with one another in order to take care of customers, bring in freight, move the product, send out the invoicing, and basically do a full service for individuals outside of companies. And so when did you, a lot of people say I either fell into freight or it was a family business. Wh which one do you fall into? I would, I'd say neither of them actually. I saw, so I was doing like starting out insurance and then I was doing the cold calls only. And I got tired of having to find sales every day. And I had heard about repeat customer, repeat business. And then so my friend was talking about it. And I was like, oh, well, that sounds something I'd be really good at. And then so I jumped over there and then, which would happen to be C.H. Robinson. Oh, okay. Yeah, C.H. Robinson, freight quote. And then once I hit a point in my life, I could do this better. And then so I branched out on my own. Take me back to those days of like when you're branching out on your own. How did you know what to look for? As far as like becoming a freight agent, going out on your own, what were those initial questions? How did you get those answered? There was a lot of them and it was scary. <laughs> I, couldn't I was terrified. I was actually really scared about this because I had no clue. I always felt like those huge corporations, they got your back, they'll take care of it. But there's actually a lot of better opportunity outside of the huge corporation, which is you just don't know about it. It's that salary sort of safety net. I think that That's most folks are used to is it's very challenging. Most folks are risk averse. They don't want to take that risk. Because they're taught that. Yes. They're taught that. They're taught that, hey, you just need that security, that base income. But they've got to remember all they're getting is the bare minimum. And you're talking about like from those larger, like sort of Anybody, brokerage. Any oh, really? company. Yeah. Any company. They're going to pay you just enough to keep you on. But you wanted something more. You thought there was more out of life. So you said, I'm going to do this on my own. Yes, my dad, he owned a business and I saw him do it. So therefore I had the mentoring a little bit. And at when I had hit that point in my life, hey, I'm doing the same thing. I'm grinding, I'm working it. I'm not making as much more because it's small percentages. I think it's time that I can do it on my own. So what were those early questions that you, or questions, concerns that you had before you joined SBI or that you wanted answers to? It was the security as far as, hey, I'm going to go out and do this. What type of support are you guys going to offer me when I need it? Or what type of liabilities will be available if something had happened in like a, a damaged claim or freight or hmm. death or So you knew to is. ask about that ahead of time. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. So what Invoicing, insurance, bond. And so those were a lot of the questions that you had before. SBI, were you talking to any other companies or, or did you? Yes, I talked to a few of them and I actually went on with one of them and I won't bring up the name or sure. anything like that, but it kind of went sideways a little bit. And then I had reached out to Joe Chandler. I read a little bit about it. I didn't know much about SPI, but we had a two hour conversation. And then literally the next day I was on board. Oh, wow. And yes, I've not looked back since. So if you don't mind me asking, what was the conflict that happened in the other company that said, I'm, I've got to get out of here? So I, they've got these non-compete, okay? <laughs> and so, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they've got a non-compete. And so I had bounced out of there. And the company that I had gone to, they just folded up and said, this is who's here and you can have access to everything you had. So I went into a little bit of a panic and all that. And I did come across Joe and Joe said that he would take care of us no matter what. That's awesome to yeah. be able to have that kind of security and safety, I would imagine, creates that loyalty to Very other companies. So. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you make the decision, you're going to, you're going to join SPI. What does that onboarding process look like? Did you have to revamp everything? Talk to your customers. What was that, I guess, evolution looking like? So 
simply put, you do have to reach out to the customers. You got to tell them, Hey, listen, I'm going to go ahead and I'll be changing and I'm going on with this really good company and they've given me more control because these customers, they're not working with the company. They're working with you. And if you've got that back office support and they know that this is going to a great place. Okay. I already know how Warren operates. I really enjoy working with him. Then they're going to make that, that jump with you as well. And so they, that's a common thing that I'm hearing among freight agents is that they, it's a little bit of a worry, but it's not too much of a worry if you have to switch providers because your customers trust you that you're making the right decision for them and their freight. Yes. And, and I promise you this, if you actually take care of your customers, they will follow you anywhere. What does taking care of your customers look like to you? Like, back That's in call. <laughs> yeah. You can set done, you better get done now. Shine the shoes. <laughs> yeah. Answer the calls at 2 a.m. on a Saturday. Where's my shipment? What's going on? Hey, can you call this receiver? Can you call the shipper? Find out where the driver's at. It's like literally, if you think you're just going to book a load and walk away, that's not taking care of your customer. Like you have got to wine and dine these guys (laughs) constantly. Who doesn't love to be wine and dine? Respectfully, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) you got to wine and dine them. You got to really take care of them because they are taking care of you. And that's the important part. And you're solving problems for them. Constantly. So if you are creating more problems for them, they're more likely they're to find leave, somebody else. Yes. They're looking for someone where it doesn't make their life more hectic, makes it less hectic. Hey, I give Warren my load. I know no matter what, it's going to be taken care of. Truck breaks down. He'll get me somebody else to get in there and train load it. So, yeah. So you have your established customers, you make them move fully over, but what does getting new customers look like? I think that kind of signals back to our social media versus cold calling versus cold email. What is your strategy for getting new customers? My new strategy is, so you do have the referrals and all that stuff. Wait, you said new? New customers. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you meant new strategy in general. No. To get new customers. No, my strategy has always been what my strategy is. There's different tiers when it comes to finding new customers. When you're coming out of the gates, It's 100 calls a day, nonstop. You build that little 50 pipeline. You keep replenishing them. Call them three, four times. If you don't speak to them, you get rid of them, and then you keep it going. And then once you start establishing those customers, then you're doing the referral leads, right? You pick up from your customer, you deliver to theirs, and then you build that clientele that way. Smart. Yeah. And And then you've got to manage your book of business on a daily basis, but then you also need to find more customers. And so this is where Mike's talking about the 25 to 50 constantly keeping that. The deep sell is, is deep, for, yeah, for well, folks who are who weren't here at the conference to listen. Mike Mikulik, he made a comment earlier about deep selling to your already customers, established yes. customers. Deep selling is huge, uh, but you've got to keep that pipe of potentially new customers always there, always there. And so... How do you manage this? You have a CRM? Like, what? I'm thinking of like the nightmare of managing. I'm the wrong person about that. <laughs> I use Excel, right? That's how I. Really? So, yeah. no CRM, just no. Excel. Excel. Okay. And then it's real simple. You click, get rid of technology is not my thing. I'm more of the speaker and all that stuff. <laughs> You're doing this, and I don't even know what this is. So, that means <laughs> conversations. Yeah. Okay. So, you vehemently agree with Mike or disagree about the 100 cold calls a day? Because that was his comment, is that you don't need to be making 100 cold calls a day. If you are already established, he is correct. If you are new into this industry, I am absolutely correct. How do you, I just think about it from, I guess, the millennial lens. If a number is calling me that I do not know, I'm not picking it up. I don't care if you call me 100 times. And it might be a good fit. They call you five, six times, you never once pick it up. No. Really? I even have it on my phone oh, set up. Oh, like, why? <laughs> I do think that there's a difference between, and I have heard this from other freight agents, the selling to people during the COVID lockdowns because everybody was just on their cell phones versus in the office. It's much easier to cold call folks in the office it because is. they have their desk phone. It is. But on my cell phone, it's an automatic setting that I can just click ignore any unknown numbers that are not already in my database. So that's automatically turned on. And then a one step ahead of it, I even tell like my friends and family, send me a text. Don't leave me a voicemail. If you call and I don't pick up because there are like also dead spots in my house that the phone doesn't ring. And I just get a notification two days later. You guys, (laughs) this technology is a killer in this world. I'm telling you, if you don't keep up with it, I understand what you're saying. 
I yeah, just I, I don't want to waste my time and I, I don't want to get on up because I'm in the middle of like certain deep work and I don't want to answer the phone <laughs> for my own mother. So if my own mother can't get through it, damn sure it's not. Going, right? So that's where I'm, I, I think of like my personal experience and then how does that apply to the difficulty of the job that you're talking about is but making you've those. to somebody once. Let's say this. You've talked to them once. Now you're more likely to answer the phone next time if you liked them or did not like them, correct? Yes, as long as I'm not doing something or I'm maybe I genuinely like the person, but I'm busy and I can't talk right now. But you'll somehow get back to them. Maybe. Possibly, right? <laughs> they left a good voicemail. If, you really like them, if they left a voicemail that says what they're calling about and not just, hey, this is me, XYZ, give me a call back. Tell me why you called. Oh my gosh, you would offend me. <laughs> my feelings would be hurt so much if I really knew you. She didn't even like me. I, I, they know just <laughs> than we had left. They don't, they, I, my best friend doesn't guys, even bother calling. do not do this in real life. You call everybody back. You always do. <laughs> my, yeah, my, that's what my dad says to me, but I do yeah. not. I do not listen because I, it's, it's spam calls that don't stop. It's political. Anytime there's, a, it feels like there's an election every two months in my state. So I'm getting all of those text messages and calls too. And not, then call emails. Not to get personal. <laughs> Below 30, mid 30. Oh, I'm almost 40. I'll be 40 okay. in January. So still, okay. But you're heavily into this stuff. This is crazy. <laughs> this world is changing so much. You know Which what I mean? Which is why I'm a big proponent of social media. I gave a talk earlier for folks. Yeah, which know, was uh, great, by the way. It was about, great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> about LinkedIn and using like, that as my like, eyes. I'm like, oh my God, what am I, what, what, what am I not doing? But that's where, I, that's where I would push back against the cold calling because you can turn a cold call into a warm call if you have a, a digital relationship established with them on social media first. I agree with you 100%. I think there's many ways of doing it, right? Lots of ways it's going to be Yes. Happen. Like the whole media way could take a week or so, but the cold call is instant. That's so true. it just depends on how you're looking to do it. Media way, I think it'd be easier. But I'm looking to grind it out now. What about both? I need now. Yeah, both would be fantastic, right? You'd be doubling up both pipelines. But like I told you, <laughs> I'm not a media person. <laughs> Instagram, like I or you say, it was LinkedIn. I'm looking, I'm like, holy shit, this is amazing. Fuck, now I got to do all this? And that's... God, so, who can I hire? That, I'm thinking, who can I hire now? I like that you brought that up because yeah. there are people who exist that will take conversations that you've had. So say, for example, we have this conversation and it gets transcribed. You could take that transcription and send it to an assistant or a VA or a ghost writer, and they can take your quotes that you've said and write LinkedIn posts about it. Wow. And just paraphrase exactly what you said and that's how a lot of executives that don't have the time to do social media posting. So they'll have a ghostwriter create posts based on their own words. So it still sounds like them, but then they're the ones, the executive is the one in line at the bank or in line at the grocery store. They have 15 minutes. They're going to check their phone. And then they'll be the ones responding to comments, responding to messages, things like that. And so the posting and the thought process and that kind of work is done. It's outsourced. But it's still using everything you've said. It's coming from you. And then you can just work on the relationship building after the post is live. So I think the problem is here. I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's so much work. What I need to be thinking is, who can I get to do it for me? Yes, based on what you've already said. Right. That's where I think a lot of folks miss the boat on is that they just hire a social media agency. And the social media agency doesn't know what the hell to post on your regard if you're not already making content if they don't have something to go off of. So these social media agencies then turn into a happy Valentine's Day from XYZ company and nobody cares. Right. But if you take some of the industry news that we've talked about earlier during a lot of these sessions, maybe if you have a conversation that you had with a customer and you recorded it on Zoom, if you take that conversation, send it to a ghostwriter, obviously don't use the personal information of the person you spoke to, but they could take what you've said, your own words, and turn those into social media posts. And that's where I think Amazing. a lot of folks are missing out. Yes. And it's an easy one for everybody involved. Saves you time, saves you money, and you still get the network effect. Did, I don't know why. I, did I sell you on this? I feel oh, like I did. did. <laughs> like, I'm like, am I talking? I'm like, not memorizing. <laughs> yeah, you're the guest on the podcast. Here. Yeah, like, you, you just sold me like a bunch of stuff. I don't even tell you. And I'm not an easy sell. I shouldn't say I'm not an easy sell, but. <laughs> 
So what is what has been the biggest barrier for you not to be on a platform like LinkedIn? I, the timing. Like, I don't know anything about it. I, I know enough about it, but not how to go after certain industries and so forth. I'm, I'm inundated with business stuff all day long. And that's the issue. Like, I just don't have time to think about how else can I get out there market. I don't have a website. I got a LinkedIn profile, but it's mediocre. You got to do the facelift. Yeah. You got to do the facelift yeah. on so it, I'm, which I'm shouldn't on, take long. Yeah, I'm sitting on a beach and, and uh, <laughs> whatever shit. That's me, my thing. And uh, yeah. So there's a couple different ways that, and I feel like this is probably evolving, but it's a conversation. So I'm going to roll with it. So there's a couple different ways that you could handle it if you're, if you and maybe other people are experiencing the same thing is you can do it two ways. You can outsource it or you can batch it. So say on a Sunday, you have a couple hours to spare, which most of us don't, but if you have a Sunday, you can write out your share good news, your email newsletter, the same communications that you're already sending to your customers. Just compile those and then write out a bunch of posts in a Google document. That's what I'll do. Several different posts, line item, break it out, break up each one. And then that way you have a document that you can go to when you're like, talk about something I don't want to talk about. <laughs> Let me go to my document. And then it's, you can just pull right from there. So I call it a lingo library document where you're writing down the questions that your customers are asking you during the week, the responses that you're sending out to your customers or your prospects or your you're leads. You're with all these ideas. <laughs> and literally, I keep saying to myself, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> That's and you're right. That's why I need to get someone yes. to do it. So then I don't want to do that stuff. But with the technology behind that, yeah. that we now have that we yes. can all take advantage of, you can take those transcriptions, you could take this episode, and you could send it off <laughs> to a writer. They write it for you. They paraphrase exactly You're what you said. You're very good at what you do. You know that? Thank You're you. very good at what you do. <laughs> I wish I had a company. I need to probably add in a company that I could <laughs> pitch. It's like a really good company to do this for. But there are several. The good thing about marketing and logistics now is that since 2020, there's been an explosion as far as like content creators yes. in this place. And when I say explosion, I 40 people are now making content within the space when it was barely Nothing. anyone. Yeah. But now we also have marketing agencies that are sprucing up that are basically sprucing up the messaging. So it's not just a marketing agency that's coming in and they know nothing about freight. A lot of stuff has moved towards the media since COVID and all that yeah. stuff. Like it's like really taken off. Yes. And I need to get on it. I need to get on that train. And the way that you could do it, I'm saying, is batching, outsourcing, or just spending the first 30 minutes of your day, instead of diving into email, check out your LinkedIn feed. Who's talking about what? And then you can either comment, engage, do whatever gonna, you I'm want. I'm going to hire. Yeah. I'm going to hire somebody to do it. Then you could do that yeah, as well. That's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah. But the easy way to do that is to really take a conversation like this, transcribe it, send it to them, and let them handle it. There and we go. then... You can handle the fun part of engaging with that customer, replying back to them, maybe having a future meeting with them if those posts go well, all that. There's a hundred different ways that you could handle it, but it's just getting the ball rolling with just a facelift on your profile first, tweet the profile like a website, and then am I, it, this is probably like overwhelming. It is. <laughs> it absolutely is. <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm thinking about this, the podcast. I'm watching you. I'm thinking about, <laughs> oh my God, I got so much to do, you know, with the media. Oh, yeah. It's just, and, and I it, treat it like, what, how do they say about, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah. Start small. Oh, just yeah. oh, make yeah. the profile over and that. You just got to make that initial step. Yes. Get it started. And then that way, if you just do the pro, if you just make over the profile, you don't have to do any posting. You don't have to do any liking or commenting. But during your cold outreach, during your cold calling. Hey, I'm going to send you, or hey, check out my. Or hey, you're right. It's just an you're extra. You see that it's an extra level of verification that yeah. this person is not a spammer, is not a double broker. Yeah. Throw um, your link profile on your email signature. Yes. Hey, check out my link profile. When exactly, you get a and that find is find out it. who we are. Find out what I do. And you're reducing the level of okay, is this person legit? Is this person yeah. real? You're reducing that those level of risk questions. So we talked earlier about risk. He sounds risk great, but who is he really? Boom, oh, here he is. Yes. And okay. so that's where I, you don't even, I wouldn't even worry about posting until you make over the profile. And then that, just use that as your leverage for now. 
And then once interact with them, but if you ever do. Hey, two years from now, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be showing <laughs> you how to do stuff. <laughs> it might be too late by then. Yeah. Okay. I guess back to the real interview. Of what we to do. <laughs> I already know where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what else, I guess, within your freight agent business, do you think would be important for other potential freight agents to know? If you were looking and not to say you are looking for a new partnership, but if you were, what would, what would those things? I can tell you what I struggle with right now. What I am struggling with where I am now is I'm trying to expand. Yeah. Uh, but I have a little bit of an issue of letting go with control a little bit because I've put my heart and soul into this sucker. It's your baby. Yeah. And uh, I say, I need someone that can do really well on focusing to the growing portion, bringing on new agents or people that the interviewing process, who's going to be great at this so that I can continue doing what I'm doing, or I need to transition, let someone that I can trust run it. And then I can focus in on that port. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I think that's a maybe a safe assumption for most business owners. Like that... I'm really struggling with it. Yeah. I'm really struggling with it. I just don't know how to do it or where to go. And so, so. I, it's, so I dealt with this. I worked in a magazine and I wanted to became their editor in chief. And then we had a Jaguars issue come up and I'm a huge Jaguars fan. So I wanted to write every article that was in the magazine. But as an editor, that's a terrible idea. You shouldn't do that. And my boss at the time, he told me, why don't you think of yourself as the conductor to the orchestra instead of trying to play every instrument? So I don't yes. know if maybe that helps. It does. But it doesn't actually maybe help with the execution. It doesn't. <laughs> I love the concept. <laughs> Executing it is the tough part. How are you hiring right now? Are you, are, is it mainly off referrals? Listen, or? I'm a really passionate person. Okay, so this has been a long weekend for me. Just <laughs> the boozing, so just so you know. But when my brain's actually working, it's I'm pretty in tune and very passionate stuff. And I had an agent. Wasn't going so well. It just wasn't for them. They moved on. I brought in a family member, which, by the way, don't ever do that. <laughs> And uh, that was brutal a little bit. And so now I'm back to square one. Back to square one. Yeah. Two attempts already. Do you have your like processes like all mapped out? No. That would help a ton. I'm sure it would. But it also helps with execution. Yes. I just went through this whole thing. I'm and sure it sucks. Would. Yes. And process mapping is fun, but not really. So yeah, I, I feel your pain on that. I definitely have some areas where I've got to improve in order to get the process really rolling are you do you document your processes at all as far as which portions all of it no. uh, if you were to hire somebody right now to start making cold calls yes what would you what would they do i would hand them the sheet and i would inform them how to do it i've got the excel this is how i do it i would train them show them and then say hey here's my presentation learn this thing and then make it your own is how i would do it and so then do you process map for all the other aspects of work? <laughs> so, yes, so I'm actually, just adding to your to-do list. Yes, we do. Okay. So we first, when they start out, I teach them about what it's like to work with carriers, sure. how to call them. So on a daily basis, they're going to be calling them for a month or so. So they get familiar with talking with these truckers. Then they're going to be reaching out and they're going to be calling to make sure that the customers are okay. That is the second process. So mm. first you learn how to talk to the truckers. Now you know what you're talking about, right? So therefore you can speak to the customers. So when they start talking about problems, you can relate to what the truckers are dealing with. And then- it Sounds like you have some important processes mapped out. I do. I've got it in there. It's just the, it's the, how do I bring them on to do it the way that I need them to do it? That's where I struggle. And the, the reasoning behind different decisions. Because yes. I'm assuming yeah. like, yes, you can freelance for a little bit, but- there's dangers in that freelancing as well because you haven't experienced this particular problem that happens when you freelance. Right. Because this is, it's a very fast paced business and it's not, hey, every time it's this way, it's, hey, this has happened. You need to adjust quick and you need to get creative sometimes, like real fast. So I guess, how are you approaching maybe the rest of this year? What does your outreach process look like? Are you marketing yourself to any new customers? Probably all of the above in, in a market like this. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? It was so brutal with the new employees. It wore me out. And so I'm just going to relax just for a little bit, kind of regroup. I think that's, that's what I'm going to do. I, I feel like that's a smart play yeah. because then it'll allow you to get your bearings straight. Yes. And like the COVID thing, it went from boom to skyrocket with business. and. 
I am a little wore out. Yeah. So I, I am going to let regroup a little bit. Burnout Just, is real. Yeah, it is. It really is. And then you, Yeah, it really is. It's so. definitely one of those things where if you feel like you're already burnt out, if you feel like you need a break, you're probably well past the time of like yeah. actually sleeping. <laughs> I'm about a year and a half past <laughs> when I needed the break. This year, I'm just going to maintain. I'm going to regroup. I'm going to rethink, put in some new goals, and then try to execute them next year. And I think that's a really great place to end the conversation because we can learn so many things that the rendezvous would like we're here right now uh, talking about LinkedIn, what's working for you, what's working for me, all of those good things. But ultimately, you have to implement them and you have to execute. Thank you.